been a while, but hello and welcome back to Bar Snacks. Today I'm going to be talking about the problem of retirement insecurity, which is when people, after an entire working life, they retire and they don't have enough money to um, live for all that time when they're out of work. I was listening to the Stephanomics podcast the other day where I first heard about this problem. And in this video, I'm going to look at how we can potentially move towards solving this problem. Right, so when I was listening to the Stephanomics podcast, there was a pretty heartbreaking clip from a retiree who now did not really have enough money to live and she had to choose between, she, she had to choose between getting her medication and uh, having enough for groceries. So it's a pretty important clip to the rest of this video, so I'm going to play it now. Um, I was getting a whole $682 a month on Social Security, and I had bills, and sometimes I had to decide between uh, groceries or medication, and sometimes I had to decide whether groceries were good this week or next week. And here you can already see the big problem with retirement insecurity. So she's having to choose between medication and groceries. These are two things that for a good quality of life are essential. And not being able to have both of them is inequality. That is increasing wealth inequality. And considering wealth inequality as a macro government objective, this is a real problem for the government because having people that aren't able to buy both things like other people are is exactly the opposite of what they're trying to achieve. Pretty much any government in the world is trying to achieve. What can we possibly do to solve this issue? The big thing that is always banded around, it's probably come up in every debate about retirement insecurity that has ever happened, is raising the working age, raising the age until it's mandatory to retire. And on the face of it, this doesn't seem like too bad an idea. It doesn't seem like a bad idea for a few reasons. Number one, government pensions become cheaper because each person individually now has to be financially supported for fewer years because they're working uh, more years towards the end of their life. So this will save government revenues as those years they now, lo now no longer have to provide for, those five years or something. And that could be, that could be hundreds of millions, that could be billions of, uh, billions of dollars. And that could really boost other sectors of the economy, such as um, healthcare and things like that, which, which really could do with more money. So there's a benefit there. By saving that money, it almost comes up as some kind of faux revenue stream, although it's actually just reducing costs. They, they now have that margin uh, with which to um, invest in other public services. Reason two, there's more labour in the economy as a whole. In order to fulfill demands for labor, that supply is now there. And with expanding demand for goods, labor is a derived demand for that. There's more labor available uh, for use. Reason three, raising the retirement age means people have that those years to save more money towards when they're no longer working. So that means that the people who are currently experiencing retirement insecurity, if the working age had been raised, they would still probably be financially secure at the moment. And this this goes back to the inequality argument um, in that if more, more and more people are financially secure, you're, you're keeping wealth inequality at the low rate just like the government wanted. The thing is though, is that raising the retirement age, it sounds like a free lunch. Like, you just raise the age, there's all these benefits to raising the age, but it's really not, for a few reasons. Reason one why it's not a free lunch. Older workers are often not properly skilled to deal with modern technology. So, a woman in this podcast, she had to go and take another course. Um, on top of all the education she had previously received, she had to go and take another course just to um, get into an administrative job. And you could definitely make the argument and probably be right in the people who have just come out of degrees now, who've grown up with modern technology and an intimate understanding of how it works and that they rely on it daily, are going to be more suited 
to um, those office jobs with long hours sitting at the computer. Reason number two, old age workers often face age discrimination. And what this means for older workers is that sometimes even if you want a job, it's not even possible to find. There are, there are younger people and people who are younger are seen as having sharper minds or are more in touch with the world today. Um, so it's often not even possible to find a decent job um, as an older worker. Reason number three, workers who are facing retirement insecurity, they need that money more than someone who's just come out with a degree, who can look around and spend time looking for jobs. But they, the, the older worker needs this money now because otherwise they simply won't have enough to uh, live a few years down the line. When workers are satisfied with the lowest potential wages, then employers are cutting costs by employing these people. And that's very detrimental to productivity because if you can just cut costs by employing new people on lower wages, there's not going to be that incentive there to make your business more productive. And that harms productivity in the long run. Reason number four, I said earlier that there's more labour in the economy as a whole to fulfil demand for labour. But what if that demand just simply does not exist? Then you're going to see unemployment rise, people in retirement insecurity. And this time, this is harming two macro government objectives, lowering wealth inequality and keeping low and stable unemployment. If you suddenly raise the retirement age five years, then all those people who are going to have retired are going to remain in the workforce. There's going to be too many people for the jobs, considering there was already a balance between demand for demand for labor and supply for labor and unemployment will necessarily rise so if raising the retirement age is not a suitable solution to this problem are there things that we could actually do which can potentially help alleviate the issue a solution that's definitely not worth trying is just increasing mandatory contribution percentages this has been tried before if people contribute now then they'll have more money in the future. So if they contribute more now, they'll have even more and they won't face retirement insecurity. But actually, it's a short-term solution only because living costs might rise independent of wages. And if people con are contributing too much to their future now, they're not retaining enough for current spending. It may leave people um, with not enough money in the short run. A mandatory increase in contribution percentage is definitely not a good solution. What is a good solution is having the only pension funds that exist be nationalised. Then if everybody is contributing in a nationalised pension fund, the risk gets spread over so many more people. The risk is diluted to an unbelievable extent than what you get with private pension funds. Private pen pension funds are too risky for the, the everyman to invest their life savings in and potentially lose. You need to nationalise pension funds. It is the best way. The state needs to run a national fund under constant vigilance. Legitimate solution two, all wages should naturally come with a pension contribution implemented in them and pension contribution schemes should be opt-out rather than opt-in. But I, I saw a study that was done in New York, and it revealed that quite a significant percentage of workers weren't making pension contributions because of simply inertia. They simply uh, couldn't be bothered to change their current situation. Because out of sight, out of mind, you don't need to worry about pension contribution at all. Maybe if you see that box every every once in a while, every time you get your paycheck, you, you look at it, but you don't do anything. Whereas an opt-out scheme has you by default signed up to pension contribution. And here the inertia effect actually benefits what you're trying to achieve. People are going to automatically have pension contributions and not worry about changing. Number three, and I think this is the biggest one on a kind of uh, socio-political level, Age discrimination must be made illegal. I can absolutely see where age discrimination comes from. I think there are pretty legitimate reasons why age discrimination exists. Imagine you're an employer, see two candidates walk in. It's one, one, is, one is a very old man, he's about 65 years old, and the other is newly graduated, has a degree, young, hardworking, 
It's who are you who are you gonna be picking, you know? Exactly. I can definitely see why age discrimination exists. And maybe if it's made illegal, it doesn't have any effect anyway. I'm not sure making age discrimination illegal will really change people's mental preferences about employees. But it's a step in the right direction. There's there's no denying that it will have some kind of positive impact for older workers. And I think it's just one of the few things that are required when we consider retirement insecurity. All right, I've been Bar Snacks, and I'll see you in the next one.